up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the Microsoft 365 Certified Fundamentals Certification Exam. So let's get into it. So in today's rapidly evolving digital landscape, businesses are adopting cloud computing as the cornerstone of innovation, agility, and scalability. Microsoft 365 Certified Fundamentals, this is an entry-level certification that provides professionals with a foundational understanding of cloud concepts, deployment models, and shared responsibility in the cloud. And this video is going to introduce you to cloud computing, helping you grasp essential cloud concepts, deployment models, and the nuance of cloud cloud service responsibility. So let's explore the key topics step by step and align our discussion with the MS-900 exam objectives. All right. So before diving into the cloud computing concepts, it is essential to understand where Microsoft Azure fits in. So Azure, this is Microsoft's cloud platform, and it offers a wide range of services, including compute power, storage, networking, and analytics. And Microsoft Azure, this forms the backbone for organizations leveraging cloud services to transform their IT infrastructure. So exactly why does Azure even matter? Well, one, it has global reach. So Azure, this operates through a vast network of data centers across the globe. It offers scalability. Azure provides dynamic resource allocation to scale up or down based on on demand. It also offers security and compliance. Azure, it adheres to rigorous security standards such as GDPR and ISO certifications, and it offers diverse services. So it offers infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. So professionals that are preparing for the MS-900 exam, they should familiarize themselves with Azure's roles in delivering Microsoft cloud solutions, especially in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. All right, so let's talk about cloud computing. So at its core, cloud computing, this refers to delivering computing resources like servers, storage, databases, networking, software, and analytics over the internet, i.e. the cloud. And this eliminates the need for physical hardware and local data centers, providing businesses with flexible on-demand access to IT resources. And here are some of the key benefits of cloud computing. The first one is cost efficiency. So you only pay for the resources that you use. Then there's scalability. So you can easily scale resources to meet business demands, global access. You can access services and data from anywhere with an internet connection. There's reliability. So it has built-in redundancy to ensure high availability of services. And then there's security. So cloud providers, they implement robust security controls and compliance measures. So cloud computing Computing, this has revolutionized how businesses operate, enabling them to innovate faster, streamline operations, and improve collaboration amongst teams. All right, so what is cloud computing? So cloud computing, once again, this is an on-demand delivery of IT resources through the internet. Instead of owning and maintaining physical data centers, businesses can rent infrastructure, platforms, or software services from cloud providers like Microsoft Azure. And here are some of the key characteristics of cloud computing. So they offer on-demand self-service. So users can provision and manage resources without human intervention. There's broad network access. So services, they are accessible via the internet on various devices. It offers resource pooling. So cloud providers, they can pool computing resources to serve multiple customers efficiently. There's this concept called rapid elasticity. This is where resources can scale quickly to match demand, and then they offer measured services. So usage is metered and customers, they only pay for what they consume. Next, let's talk about cloud service types. So cloud computing is typically categorized into three primary service models. The first one is infrastructure as a service, and this provides virtualized computing resources such as servers, storage, and networking. An example of this will be Azure Virtual Machines. We have what is called platform as a service. This delivers a development platform and tools to build, test, and deploy applications. An example of this would be Azure Application Services. And then we have Software as a Service, and this offers software applications via the internet. So think of Microsoft 365 products like Outlook, Teams, and OneDrive. So each service model, they provide different levels of control, flexibility, and management. 
All right, next, let's talk about the shared responsibility model. So in cloud computing, the concept of shared responsibility is crucial to understand, and it refers to the division of security and operational responsibilities between the cloud providers, such as Microsoft and the customer. So let's talk about responsibility allocation. So cloud provider responsibilities are as follows. They offer security of the cloud infrastructure, such as the physical security network and host controls. They offer hardware maintenance and availability, and they provide the platform services and compliance with global standards. And then we have the customer responsibilities, and they provide security in the cloud as it relates to data, identity, access management, and applications. And they also configure these services securely, and they also manage access, and they adhere to best practices. Now on your screen right here, you can see a breakdown of the different service models, what the cloud provider is responsible for and the customer responsibility. So for example, in Microsoft 365 in software as a service, Microsoft ensures application availability and security, but the customer must implement proper user access controls and data protection measures. All right, moving on, let's talk about cloud models. So cloud computing, this offers several deployment models, each designed to suit specific organizational needs. So understanding these models is essential for determining which one aligns with a business's goals. So the first one is the public cloud. So this is where services are offered over the internet and shared among multiple customers. And some providers are Microsoft Azure, AWS, and Google Cloud. The benefits is cost effective, scalable, and you can access it from anywhere. And the use case would be startups or businesses without heavy security or compliance requirements. Then we have what is called the private cloud. And this is where resources are dedicated to a single organization and hosted on premises or by a third party provider. And the benefits, they offer enhanced control, security, and customization. And the use case for this would be organizations with strict compliance and security requirements. Then we have what is called the hybrid cloud, and this combines public and private clouds to provide greater flexibility. The benefits, it offers optimal workload distribution and cost savings. And the use case for this would be businesses requiring sensitive data storage in private clouds, but leveraging public clouds for scalability. Next, we have what is called the community cloud, and this is a cloud infrastructure that is shared by organizations with common interests or regulatory requirements. And the benefits, it offers improved collaboration and resource sharing. And the use case for this would be government agencies, healthcare providers, and financial institutions. Now, when it comes to choosing the right model, organizations, they must evaluate factors like cost, security, compliance, and workload type to determine the best cloud model. And finally, let's talk about the consumption-based model. So a significant advantage of cloud computing is its consumption-based pricing model where organizations only pay for the resources that they consume. And how it works is as follows. So users, they consume resources such as compute power, storage, and bandwidth as needed. Then the charges, they are based on the actual usage rather than the upfront costs. And then the resources, they can scale up or down dynamically, ensuring businesses are not over-provisioning. And then the benefits of consumption-based models are as follows. So first thing, they offer cost savings. So they eliminate capital expenditures for hardware. They offer flexibility. So organizations, they can scale resources based on fluctuating demand. They offer transparency. So building this reflects precise resource usage and it's optimized for budgeting. So businesses, they can forecast and manage IT spending more effectively. An example of this in Microsoft Azure will be as follows. So Microsoft Azure, they provides various consumption-based services like Azure Virtual Machines and Azure Blob Storage. So if an organization runs a virtual machine for a specific time, they are only billed for the hours that they have used. So in conclusion, cloud computing has transformed IT infrastructure by offering scalable, cost efficient and innovative solutions. Microsoft's Azure platform and Microsoft 365 services provide businesses with flexible cloud solutions, enabling them to meet today's digital demands. And the key concepts that were covered in this video, including cloud models, the shared responsibility model and the consumption based pricing, they are fundamental to understanding how cloud computing works and aligning with the MS-9 900 exam objectives. So by mastering these concepts, professionals, they can confidently navigate the cloud landscape, ensuring businesses leverage cloud technology to drive innovation and growth.
Now, with all that being said, let's do some check on learning. So the first question is, what is the primary advantage of the consumption-based model in cloud computing? Is it it allows unlimited resources at a fixed cost? Is it organizations only pay for the resources they use? Is it resources are provided at no cost during high demand periods? Or is it all resources are prepaid for long-term usage? And the correct answer is organizations only pay for the resources they use. So the consumption based model, this is a key feature of cloud computing where organizations are built based on actual usage of cloud resources, such as compute power, storage or bandwidth. In this model, it helps control costs and aligns expenses with the business's needs. Next question, which of the following best describes the shared responsibility model in cloud computing? Is it the cloud provider is responsible for all security aspects? Is it the customer is responsible for physical and software level security? Is it responsibilities are divided between the cloud provider and the customer? Or is it the customer must outsource security responsibilities to a third party? And the correct answer is responsibilities are divided between the cloud provider and the customer. So the shared responsibility model defines the security and compliance responsibilities of the cloud provider and the customer. So for example, the provider manages the physical infrastructure while the customer is responsible for securing their data, applications, and access control. And our final question, what is one of the primary benefits of cloud computing compared to traditional on-premises infrastructure? Is it higher upfront costs? Is it on-demand scalability? Is it greater hardware dependency? Or is it limited global availability? And the correct answer is it is on-demand scalability. So cloud computing, this allows organizations to scale resources up or down as needed, providing flexibility to meet fluctuating demand, unlike on-premises infrastructure, which requires significant upfront investment and fixed capacity, the cloud enables dynamic resource allocation.